Hello, so I was just finishing a live stream and about to log out of Microsoft Flight Simulator when I saw a notification up in the top corner that the M20R from Carinado or the Mooney had been updated. So I went and had a dig around and I can't find out exactly what's been changed in it in the last day or two. But um, I couldn't resist going and having a look really and taking up for a flight because I know it was broken in the past and I wanted to see if they fixed it. So it had some strange behavior around the altitude control in the autopilot and the the various um, GPS and radio navigation controls. So I thought it might be nice just to take it up, have a fly around and see if it works any better than it did a couple of weeks ago. So we are at Boonville in the US. So it's a nice little airfield, nice pretty little corner of, of um, America. And it's D83 is the ICAO code, if you're wondering. Uh, if we go and have a look at the map, we are going to take off from Boonville. So we'll take off runway, uh, was it 31? And just do a, you know, fly around here for a bit and we'll play with some of the settings for the navigation. And we'll end up landing at Cloverdale Municipal 060. Okay, so first of all, let's go and get the Mooney up and running. So let's check on the floor. We're using the left fuel tank, which is perfect. We'll go and turn on the master power switch over there and the alternator. No harm in turning that on already. Um, let's have a quick look. We've got the pitot heat over here. We don't probably need that. It's a lovely warm day. Uh, where are the light switches in this thing? So I'm just checking around. Ah, they're overhead. Of course they are. So rotating beacon, turn the beacon light on because we're about to start the engine. We'll put the nav light on while we're here. We're not going to bother venting air from the cabin. There's no point at the moment. Um, don't want the radio on before the engine. So let's go and turn the engine over and see what happens. So we need to put the mixture on rich. We'll crack the throttle open. We'll make sure we've got the parking brake on. It's on and we turn over the engine and we have an engine which is perfect and it seems happy enough running and the gauges all look good okay so we will go and put the pitot heat on now let's go and we've got this standby vacuum we won't need that we won't need the fuel boost, boost pump as you can see the engine's already running it's fine elevator trim Go and oh, it's not even usable, so I guess that would be to power the automatic, you know, the autopilot elevator trim, but we don't need it apparently. Okay, turn the radio master switch on, we get the rest of the radio kit. Interestingly, this is already booted up, so it would appear that it was already on when it wasn't on, if that makes sense. So they've only controlled switching its display on and off, not the actual unit itself, which is a little bit odd. Okay, so we'll turn on the transponder, ADF's there, and it's like quietly doing nothing. Um, we'll just wait for the GPS to align itself. Let's just go and remind ourselves we're going to from D83 to 060. Okay, there we go, so flight plan, push, roll, click, D83 is Boonville, enter and then click 063 oh I forgot the wrong number 60 sorry 060 Cloverdale Municipal perfect so press flight plan change this back to show the um, the arc mode essentially so that's the first page of the nav chapter which I got to by rolling the inner knob while looking at the map okay so that all looks great and that's all working as you'd imagine. I'll be interested to see though if this works and if this will work on navigation. So we'll put it on radio mode for the moment and we'll go and pre-tune the VOR to 11230 or sorry the nav radio. So we'll come over here and go and tune this to 11230 we're not going to use it immediately when you take off. We're going to do a little bit of circling first. So we'll change that to active. 
the course we will want to be flying, the radial from that beacon, is 126 degrees. So we'll go and pre-configure that as well, just to make our life easy. So there's our course. Whoops. So that's about 126 degrees magnetic on the the course of the uh, NAV1 instrument, or the HSI. We'll also go and set our uh, heading bug for the same kind of direction because we'll be playing with heading mode and having a mess around along the way. Okay, so let's get off the parking brake, flaps to take off position. Let's have a look outside actually, see if the flaps are still working. So the flaps have extended. How quickly do they move? If we go full flaps, they're not very fast moving are they? But that's not kind of what we expected. Okay, we'll sit up so we can see over the nose. Just move my computer out of the way. Crack the engine open. We're off the parking brake and we're rolling. Okay, here we go, runway 31 at Boonville, and we're going to open the engine up full track, full power. So there doesn't seem to be an issue with hitting full power in a Carinado aircraft. They never seem to overstress, so we're going to take advantage of that. We're accelerating, coming up through 60 knots on the indicated airspeed. We'll rotate at 70, and we're in the air. Pull up a little bit more. Thing is, we can't see where we're going from this camera view, but I wanted to show the animation of the undercarriage, which is very nice. And gear up, jump inside. We're holding just about 80 knots, which is perfect. And we'll roll over to one side and fly the reciprocal direction. So we're looking for the heading direction that we were looking at earlier, so there we go. So we'll just roll out on that and we'll trim the aircraft to fly the same climb rate we were on at the moment, so which is perfect. So then we go and turn on the autopilot and it's going to do, it's interesting, look, it's just holding the roll and pitch we were at, which is what you'd expect. So then we go for heading mode. So it's going to pretty much continue doing what it's doing. So let's have a play with this then. So we're going to say we want 4,000 feet. We're at 1,500 just coming up. Did I calibrate this? No, I didn't calibrate it. We're actually a lot higher than that. We're at nearly 2,000 feet. We're going to go for 4,000 and we're going to click arm. And it's done nothing. We are then going to push this. It should have cl started climbing at 500 feet a minute and armed itself, and it hasn't. So this is still bust. Yeah? It's not doing anything of the sort. Now, interestingly, if we press... I've actually seen this already. It's, it's broken in all sorts of inventive ways. If we press the vertical speed mode, that does arm VS. It still shows height, but we can come in here and we can set the, the climb rate. So we can say climb at a thousand feet a minute, but it will take no notice of the altitude. Okay, so the altitude, the targeted altitude is still broken. They haven't fixed it. But that's not kind of what I'm most worried about. What I really want to see is what happens when I press nav on the autopilot. So we are in VLOC mode, so we're using the radio beacon. We want to be on the 125 degree radial out of the beacon, which is to the left of us. Let's press nav. And it won't do it. It may be because we are too far away. So we'll go back to heading mode. And we will turn left. To about 70 degrees, maybe. Sorry if I'm too close to the microphone. I'm kind of concentrating and leaning towards the screen to see what I'm doing. So 
So we're going to fly over towards that track. We're still climbing, by the way. We'll carry on until we're about 5,000 feet because it will get, get us clear of these hills anyway. But look, look what's happened. It stopped climbing at 4,000 feet. This was in vertical speed mode. So it turns out they've actually messed this up and they've put altitude mode inside vertical speed mode. Yeah, so this is doing it. So if we went to 5,000 feet and click VS, that somehow works. But then we can arm that. It's very odd. What should be happening is this should go to 500 feet a minute, but it hasn't looked. It's gone absolutely... If we just arm the altitude on its own, it won't work. If we go to vertical speed mode, we can then arm the altitude for the vertical speed, if that makes sense. But then it gives us a crazy vertical speed, so we have to go and set it correctly, otherwise we'll slam into the ground any moment. So I'm just going to do that before that happens. So it's kind of like... Altitude mode should work on its own. It shouldn't need vertical speed mode. And when you arm altitude by pressing it, you, you know, you spin an altitude in and you press arm and it should immediately jump to 500 feet a minute towards that altitude. And then you can use, you can press vertical speed over here to change that rate. But that just doesn't happen at all. But bizarrely, you can arm the altitude when you're using vertical speed mode. So it's kind of like they've got half of the code there. The really maddening thing is there are other Carinado aircraft where this works correctly. And the PC-21 I think is one of them. Anyway, where are we on our track? So we're just about to cross over. Let's go for... Um, we'll turn the... Sorry, we'll turn the heading bug then to... We don't want to be exactly on it, do we? Let's go so we're off to one side to see if it will correct. So I'm just letting the needle drift. We were too close to it. So, and we want that to be over there. There you go. So, we turn back towards the direction we want to go. We're off to the left of the line. Let's press nav. Is it going to keep turning? Yes, it is. It's working. So we must have just been out of range. Yeah, for it to make sense of it. It wasn't going to do that big of a correction. Which may well be accurate. Okay, let's see if we can switch back to GPS and see if it will go and reacquire the line on the GPS. So when we change CDI mode, watch what happens to the, the mode on the autopilot. So nav mode switched off. Yeah, it's just holding the roll that it was at. So if we go back to nav mode again, it should roll right. And it's not going to look. It's ignoring it. Which is a shame. Let's go for heading mode. It may again. It may be we're too far away from where it needs to be, so we'll go. We switched on heading, and look, it's allowing nav and heading at the same time, which again may be accurate. It may be that it will switch to nav mode when it's close enough to acquire the track, but it's not going to perform the intercept all on its own. So we are performing the intercept ourselves. Obviously, quite a, a vicious one here. We're still going absolutely flat out on the engine. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Yeah, look, we've, we've leveled out at 5,000 feet when we were in vertical speed mode, which it shouldn't do. If you're in vertical speed mode, it should ignore the the altitude capture. So the thing that seems to be messed up is you can arm the altitude while you're in vertical speed mode, but you can't use arm altitude if you're not, whereas you should be able to. When you arm altitude, it should immediately start doing it and go for 500 feet a minute to get to the altitude. Right, so let's go, let's keep an eye on these. So heading mode is switched off and it's turning left. 
so when we got near the beam or near the uh, the track sorry it started working so it just won't correct without you know within wide parameters you have to get it in the neighborhood and then it will start behaving itself okay that's good to know so we are approaching Cloverdale Municipal so let's see if we can get this to behave itself then so we actually want to go to say a thousand feet or 1500 and we will go vertical speed mode and we'll push this and say let's start descending at a thousand feet a minute or 1500 even come off the throttle and then we will arm altitude so it should if we've got this right on the way the crazy programming has been done it should pull out at 1500 feet so the thing that's missing is being able to use the altitude without the vertical speed vertical speed mode itself should take no notice of the altitude being armed and if you don't believe me here's the documentation altitude pre-selector select the desired altitude using the mouse wheel turn the outer knob blah 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 press the alt arm button to pursue a selected altitude when you select an altitude and press the alt arm button the aircraft will climb or descend to that altitude at 500 feet a minute you can change this by pulling the inner knob and move the mouse wheel or hovering the inner knob on the 2D view, the same thing. If you select vertical speed engage, that's the VS button, the aircraft will climb or descend to the desired vertical speed and will not stop at any altitude. When the out button in the control panel is pressed, also that's the one over here, on, it will just go to altitude hold. So what they're basically saying is, yeah, this VS engage button should take no notice of the target altitude. This one should set the target altitude and start climbing or descending to it, which is how some of the other Carinado aircraft behave, but not this one. So we are right overhead the airfield right now. So if we go and look outside, we should see it, he says, famous last words. There it is. So which way is the wind? Uh, okay, so we're going to leap around, so we'll go turn off the autopilot now. We're going very fast. So there's the airfield, we'll do a, a, a circle around it and then come back in. Just to get a, a bit of a visual of where we are. It's a very nice pretty scenery around here, isn't it? So yeah, that documentation I showed you was the documentation for the M20R from the Carinado website. And the aircraft doesn't behave in the way they describe. Let's hope they fix it soon. So we're going to loop round to the other end, do left circuit and approach in. That's the warning, the clack's on about putting the gear down, so I'm going to go and put the gear down now. We are losing speed the entire time, which is good. Can't put the flaps down until 110 knots, but that's fine. Flaps are on their way. Sit up so we can see over the nose. As usual in Flight Sim, there's a tree in the approach route, which is great. 
and we just hover it just off the off the tarmac, and we're down. Wheel brakes on. Flaps up. So yeah, that was interesting. So the aircraft is fixed in some ways and broken in other new ways. <laughs> well, not new ways, it's been broken. The altitude pre-selector has been broken for a long time. We, I noticed it and a couple of my friends noticed it just after Sim Update 11 that it was broken, but we're not sure if it was broken at Sim Update 11 or 10. We suspect it was Sim Update 11 that broke it because we'd flown the um, the Mooney in the past and it had been fine. I'll have to remember to go and file it with Carinado in their support section, let them know. I'm presuming they already do know and they're working on it, but you, you can't take that chance, can you? If you want it fixed, it's best to tell them. Presumably, they can borrow the code from the airplanes where it does work. But as I said, I haven't tested it exhaustively, so I'm not sure if it's broken in all of the aircraft. It may be that something has changed inside the simulator engine that has caused it to break, and therefore it could be all aircraft that used that piece of um, kit have broken. Go and park over next to the Mustang over here. Okay, parking brake on. Mixture pulled to stop. Pito heat off. Radio master switch off. Alternator off. Uh, ignition to off. The beacon light off, nav lights off. We can correct this, which wasn't in the right place, and put the fuel stock cockpit off. And we're pretty much good to go. Just out of interest, let's go and try this now. Okay, so given the benefit of the doubt, I would have imagined that would have gone further around. But anyway, we're not going to worry too much. There we go. So that was the Carinado... M20R Mooney, which still appears to have some weirdness broken in it. But the navigation seemed to work, but it wouldn't correct for a massive um, discontinuity and, you know, where you were and where you wanted to be. You had to get it in the ballpark of the, the track for it to be able to then correct itself on the autopilot. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you again soon.